Hey guys, Tom from Nerds of the West here. Today I'm giving you an overview of Fairy Season. I've been having a lot of fun playing this recently. This is a hand management and trick taking game from Good Games Publishing, designed by Gavin Jenkins and Dan Fish. Yes, I had to check the box to get that right, but this game is a whole lot of fun and great for the whole family. This game is incredibly simple. There are 90 cards in here and each one is gonna help you in a different way to get as many points as you can. First of all though, this art is beautiful. I love the glossy finish that they've put on the box. I love all the different designs they've got for every different type of fairy and all the goblins are just kind of fun as well. So, each fairy that you capture is gonna give you one point and there are special royal fairies that are gonna give you two points. Every single card has a different effect that is gonna help you get more fairies into your stash and keep them out of other people's stash. Setup for this game is incredibly easy. You shuffle up the cards and deal five out to every player. In the time it's taken me to explain that to you, you're ready to play. The design of all the different fairies is incredibly eye-catching, but they've made sure that all of the text and everything important is incredibly bold and differentiated from the art so you can always make sure you understand what every card is going to do. There are four different types of cards that you're gonna play during this game. You've got your seasonal fairies, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Each of them, each season, has a different kind of effect that you're gonna to use to get cards, and I'll cover them more in a second. You've also got goblins, got different kinds of goblins that are all gonna have different effects like stealing cards from other people's stashes or stealing cards from the swarm. Traps, big powerful cards let you basically win nearly every time, but there are some things you can do to stop that, which is basically covered by royal fairies. Royal fairies, super important, super special, not only in stopping traps, but also if you ever have all four of them, you instantly win the game. Each different season has a different fairy in art style and a different fairy effect. Spring lets you draw two cards. Summer fairies will draw you one card. Autumn fairies draw one and stash one card, which is to take a card from your hand and put it into your points pile, your stash. And winter fairies stash one card. So everything gets played in a slightly different way and you need to pay attention to what you might want to do, which is where the hand management aspect of the game comes in. Goblin cards will let you interact with the game in special ways and you just need to read the text on there to understand how they work. So the Thieving Goblin, stash the top two cards from another player's stash. Grab their cards, they're now yours. Goblin cards can also be played pretty much any time, even if their effect wouldn't come into play. That way you can keep the swarm going because that is very, very important. So the way that you play this game is incredibly easy. You've got your hand of cards and you play into the swarm. The swarm is the current pile of cards in the middle and they are the swarm of fairies that you are currently trying to capture. The first player can start from any season they want, but for simplicity's sake, let's say you start with the two of spring. Now the next player has to play either equal to or higher than that in spring, or they can jump up to the next season, in this case, summer. You have to follow the progression of seasons. You can't jump from spring to autumn, but you can go summer to autumn and then autumn to winter. Once you play a card, you do its action. So play spring, draw two cards into your hand. There's a special rule. If you play the exact same number onto the swarm, you can then either choose to draw a card or stash a card, but you do that after you have done the action of the card that you played. Goblins can be played at any time onto the swarm and that keeps the game going because if you can't play a card onto the swarm, you flunk. And that means the person who played before you is gonna take all of those fairies and put them into their stash. If someone flunks and you wanna keep the game going, you can play a royal fairy and that will continue the game from you, thereby skipping other people's turns and making you the person who has last played into the swarm. There are six trap cards and the trap will instantly trap the entire swarm. The only way to beat a trap is by playing another trap onto it or by playing Royal Fairy to continue the game. You play all of these cards sideways, Royal Fairies, Goblins and Traps, so that you can always see what fairy is currently in the swarm and follow the progression of seasons properly. Once the swarm has been captured, the person who flunked draws back up to five cards first and everyone else does so. If you've ended up with more cards than five, good for you, you've got more cards to deal with for the next swarm. Once the last card has been drawn, you have one final swarm. Cards left in your hand do not matter and then you count up all the fairies that you've captured into your stash. Each seasonal fairy is worth one point and every royal fairy is worth two. What I've been loving about this game is it's not about the trick that you're playing right now. While you do have to pay attention to that and keep the game going, you're always thinking ahead, always planning, 
do I use this goblin now to steal just one point? Or maybe I'm going for all the royal fairies. Maybe you've got two royal fairies in your hand and you're thinking of a way that you can get them into your stash, either by moving the game onto winter or by using your goblin and hoping that no one else can then steal it from your stash. You're always having to pay attention to what everyone else is doing. So it's not like a normal trick taking game where you've just got to think, are these cards good enough? You're always looking at the future, looking at your cards in your hand and deciding whether or not it's worth it to try and win the current swarm. Probably my one criticism of the game though is sometimes you end up with a really bad hand because you've only got the five cards and there's not a lot you can do to mitigate that. I've got to give a lot of credit to the designers for their really well laid out rulebook. This game sounded really complicated to me the first time I was explained it, but reading the rulebook made it so much clearer. Every single card has its own page showing you how to win, how many points it's worth and what it can be played on top of and what can be played on top of it. So if you're ever confused about how a trap resolves or how a royal fairy can best be used, the rulebook can explain it really clearly. So once you've got that first game in, this becomes a really quick game of hand management and trick taking that I think just about everyone can enjoy. The game does recommend ages 10 plus, and I've met a couple of really smart eight-year-olds and I reckon they could get this going. So if you're looking for a good game for your family, this isn't gonna be the game that you sit down and play every night, but just a really cute, fun game. I think I can highly recommend this to you. If you're a hardcore board gamer, this probably isn't the game for you. You're still gonna have fun with it. There's still enough to think about and actions to do but you're not going to get many plays out of it. If you're a family looking for a quick game that you can all enjoy, I think you're going to get a whole lot of plays out of this. It's really pretty as well. Like, I, I just can't get over... I honestly, got distracted a couple of times playing it, just admiring the different fairy season designs. If I'm getting distracted by this, I'm sure your kids will too. If you like this kind of video, it really does help us out. If you like, subscribe, tell your friends to watch it. Pretty much, at the end of the day, I recommend this game. My name's Tom, I'm from Nerds of the West. Have fun playing board games, and I'll catch you next time.